So conventionally in life, what we try to do is to find well-being um, and happiness by rearranging our thoughts, emotions and sensations and circumstances. That's the conventional approach to life. We want more positive, we want less or no negative, and we have a whole collection of neutral data that we really don't care about, we don't think about. And just to repeat what was said, data is a term we use here to describe anything we can experience, thoughts, emotions, sensations, people, places and things. It's just very, very simple. Rather than, rather than sorting our experience into certain things that seem more important than other things, data. So the game of life is to try and uh, have more positive, less negative and the neutral we don't care about. Uh, I always say this, but it's clear to everyone here that that approach doesn't work. You can't only have positive. You can't get rid of your negative. And the older you get, if, if your experience is anything like me, your pile of negative gets bigger and your pile of positive starts to dwindle. Um, now the other problem is that everyone is different. So what I consider to be positive, you may well consider to be negative. And the conventional game of having friends and friendship is to try and hang out with people generally who like what we like and generally who dislike what we dislike. Now, <laughs> If we were to make a list right now of our top, say, three favourite things and our top three least favourite things, the, we wouldn't have the same lists. And like I said, my favourite lists would probably be on your least favourite lists. So in terms of trying to find friends and to get along in the world of convention, it's impossible. You, you will never meet somebody with exactly the same opinions and belief systems as you. Even if you have an identical twin, brother or sister, they do not have the same belief systems, opinions, assumptions and all of these things. And they're, according to science, genetically identical. They're the same person. And so if we're trying to find peace and harmony with somebody else through having the same belief systems and opinions, then it's quite hard work. Have you noticed, maybe, when you get into a new intimate relationship, how wonderful and lovely everything about your new partner is? We, have, we think the same things, we like the same things, all these little quirky habits, oh, I love them so much. But then maybe three months, six months, a year later, some of the quirky little habits are a bit like maybe fingers on a blackboard. They're not quite so sweet and marshmallowy and fluffy they're in fact downright annoying um, and so that would be one example of, in life of trying to find happiness and stability in setting up our circumstances in a particular way and everyone knows this one you know being in it being in an intimate relationship if we're not in one we want to be in one if we are in one it might be you know really great but generally speaking um, again I can only share my own experience the magic of the initial period doesn't last um, and usually what we do is blame our partner for the loss of that magical feeling and maybe a year or two down the line we want a new partner or we just don't want a partner at all for a while and it just goes on and on and on believing that we will find happiness stability with the perfect person um, and again, this is something the older you get, I mean, how often are you going to fall for that? 10 times, 20 times, 30 times. I always share this story, but I've been lucky enough to be in India on and off for like the past 12 years. And um, when I first came to this training in 2006, there was a participant whose mother was um, in her 90s. And she sent my friend an email saying, um, I've just got myself a new toy boy, he's 86, <laughs> I think he might be the one. You know, this is a, 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 a woman who's 96 years old, you know, so that mechanism is something that is so, it's so programmed into us. And it's not just that, there are many things that we believe will provide well-being, stability and happiness. And we're, we, we know that there's something worth looking for, so we really do our best. You know, I, in, in my life, I'm 50 this year, and um, 
I really tried to do the things that my, the school, the media, my parents, my friends told me would make me happy. And sometimes I had all of these things in place, but did I feel fulfilled and did I feel okay? In my, in my experience, the more conventionally everything was perfect, the, the less I felt comfortable because aren't I supposed to feel like an adult? Like I've arrived, I've got everything in place, what's going on? And it was, it, the opposite was true. Because I had all of these things in place, it was very clear to me that these things did not provide me with what I was looking for. Now, instead of looking at that approach and saying, this approach of trying to hold on and cultivate the positive and get rid of the negative, the, the approach doesn't work, what do we do? We, we blame ourselves. The reason it doesn't work is because it's me, it's my fault. I need to think about what's going on think about it, analyze it, maybe get the, the help of some professionals who can also tell me that yes, it is your fault. And I did do that. I, I, I found out that it was not only my fault, it was, it was my parents' fault. My parents were one of the reasons why I was unhappy. Maybe it was because they didn't take me on enough holidays when I was small. But it's so, it's such a negative way of looking at things. Why? I want to go, if I ever go to a psychologist or psychiatrist again, I would like him to say or her to say, now let's look at when you were happy in your life and why your parents were the cause of your, that period of happiness. You know, there are no books about that, why your parents caused your happiness. It's, it's all about why, you know, why we look at what doesn't work and we, we're suffering and all of these things. So um, it's a very one one-sided way of looking at things we call it constructive criticism now of course it of course it has its benefits you know we want to improve we, we want to um, get the most out of life but if we're doing this cultivating positive trying to modify the negative and really not getting anywhere you know we're not finding well-being we're not able to have the perfect circumstance it gets very frustrating and if we don't have any other approach really the only the only option we have is really to blame ourselves and so it's a very um very dis disempowering and quite a hurtful way to be and to treat ourselves in that way now when you come to this training you're given a completely different approach where like i said at the beginning we try to find well-being by rearranging our thoughts emotions and sensations but how about if you can be introduced to something that provides well-being regardless of what you're feeling, thinking, regardless of what your circumstances are. Now ultimately isn't that what we're looking for? To find something that gives us well-being with whatever life throws at us, not something that excludes certain aspects of what it means to be a human being and then we'll be okay. So like not feeling physical pain, not feeling sick. You know, maybe you're trying to get rid of sexual desire but you see, all of these things are what it means to be a human being. This is what makes us human beings. And if we're trying to eradicate certain aspects of our humanity in order to find well-being, we're going to be doing it for the rest of our lives. But more importantly, we're basically removing ourselves from everyone who does feel sexual desire, who does feel physical pain, who does feel, you know, all the positive and negative things. These are what make us a human being. So, we want to find a training and a support system that allows us to identify something in our, ex in our experience, not as a philosophy, but as an experience that provides us with well-being, empowerment, what, with whatever's going on. So, I'm, you know, we're in India, a beautiful, beautiful country with a very, very rich and ancient history of teachings about the nature of mind and about the nature of reality. And I'm sure you've been to many teachers and trainings and you've read many books that says everything is all one, we are perfect, everything is perfect. Now if that is the case, everything is perfect, that means everything is perfect. You can't remove sexual desire because that isn't perfect. If everything is all one and perfect, it includes everything. Now the Balanced View Training allows you very simply to identify your fundamental basis and capacity as a human being, what is it that, that allows you to perceive all of these positive, neutral and negative things? 
in the balance view training we call this open intelligence it doesn't matter what you call it it's irrelevant really what's important is that we introduce you to the direct experience of what we call open intelligence what's looking through your eyes right now what's listening to me speak that is open intelligence and a very easy way to identify that in, in your experience as we we just heard is to stop thinking or stop describing right now now when I do that there's a, there's a bright alertness but it doesn't last very long I hear the squeaking fan that, that's that's what always comes to me I stop thinking squeaking fan <laughs> so your experience might be the same I say, I, I say to you, stop thinking, stop describing, and you might almost immediately have the thought, I can't stop thinking, I can't stop describing, what are they talking about? But most people, when you just stop the train of thought, stop the train of descriptions, there is a recognition that there is still something there. It's quite subtle, but it's very obvious. So that is a direct introduction to open intelligence. It's, you already have it, you're not getting it by coming here. It's, it's your capacity to experience everything, positive, neutral and negative. You don't need to do anything to make it. What we do here is we just recognize it for short moments and we repeat that again and again, whenever you remember. Now the most amazing thing about that instruction is you don't need to change anything about yourself in order to do that. How amazing is that? When I got this instruction it was like, um, I mean, I can't do this anymore, I'm too heavy, but jumping up in the air and clicking my heels together. Um, I, I didn't actually do that, but um, that's what I felt like, because it was like, wow, this, this is it. This, this, is a, this is an instruction where I don't need to uh, change my depression. I don't need to get rid of my depression. It's my depression. Oh, I'm really depressed. I'm too fat. I need a girlfriend. Oh, God. Oh. I stop. I recognize open intelligence and I just relax, just for a brief moment. So the, the, the full instruction, the only practice, is short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times, become continuous. So the, the second part of that instruction is very important, repeated many times. So you don't need to hold open intelligence in place, you just repeat it whenever you remember. And what you'll find is that it's your thoughts, your emotions, your sensations, the person you're talking to who you find really annoying, that's the opportunity and the empowerment for you to recognize open intelligence just for a brief moment. So you'll find opportunities all throughout your day to practice. Your life is perfect to practice this simple instruction. Now in the Balance View training we have other aspects of a simple support network that are only there to elicit your own recognition of open intelligence. And I'll just come to those in a moment, but you might be thinking, why do I want to recognize open intelligence? It's like, you know, yeah, I, I recognize open intelligence. But practically speaking, what happens is that rather than emphasizing your opinions, belief systems, assumptions, you know, if somebody makes you angry, when you recognize open intelligence, rather than just reacting to the anger, what we're recognizing is something that's the same for every human being. It's identical. Open intelligence that open, clear expanse that you identify when you stop thinking is the same for every single human being. And when we have that as the basis of our interactions, we're automatically connected. It doesn't matter whether we're speaking to somebody with completely the opposite set of belief systems to us. We might still have all the data, you know, what an idiot, what, how can they believe this? This is just ridiculous. I need to speak to them, I need to convince them that they're idiots and I'm right and they're wrong. This, this is how I used to be. I was really good at doing it as well, arguing, intellectually arguing to prove that I'm right and you're wrong. And did I ever, ever convince somebody that their deeply held beliefs um, were wrong? And they said, oh yeah, Adrian, you're brilliant. Thank you for clearing that up for me. I'll believe what you believe now. <laughs> ne ne never, N not once. All, it, all, it, all, it, all that happened was you just ended up with two very angry people. Now, when I, when I meet somebody now who has different opinions and belief systems to me, I have open intelligence as my wingman, buddy, goose, top gun. Oh, yes. We're really up to date in this training. <laughs> we, we, we use the latest media and films to enhance the training. 
like I said, I'm nearly 50. So. But it is quite something to, re to recognise in your experience that there is, there is something in your experience that is powerful. It doesn't need cultivating. It certainly doesn't need discussing. And when you rely on that, your options just open up. Now, for me, as somebody who's very, very cynical, sarcastic, competitive, argumentative, it was just like the best relief to, say, for example, go to a family gathering where I just want to butt in and, you know, tell everyone that, that what they're doing is wrong and don't speak like that and you need to do this and why are you watching this on TV? And, and just to sit there now and just relax in open intelligence and just thoroughly enjoy my family. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not to try to convince anyone about this training other than being my, I might be slipping out of shot here, <laughs> other than, uh, you know, other than um, my, my actual example of the training. And, and so now I'm, I'm very helpful. I love doing things for my sisters and my father. Um, if they ever watch this, they'll probably email me and say, what are you talking about? You never help. But I do, I do, I do, I help more normally. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a lot more than I used to. And um, because I used to be so, uh, uh, so angry and caught up in my own thoughts, emotions and sensations. The, the, my main drive in life was to basically, I wanted to have as much sex as possible. Um, and everything related back to that. So I, I'm too fat. So I, I need to lose weight do yoga especially in India so I need to be you know in my mind's eye when I do yoga I, I sort of see some some tanned really thin practitioner but in reality it's like a, a albino hippopotamus in a nappy <laughs> like really really horrific but um so you see I've tried my entire life to change my my my, my physicality with with some some success and sometimes not, but the point is, is that everything related back to that. So I, 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 you know, if I was with someone, all I could think about was, oh, what do they think of me? I, oh, why did I eat that pizza yesterday? If I hadn't eaten yesterday and today, then I'd be a little bit thinner and I could maybe, you know, maybe she'd like me. And, and then, you know, everything relating back to such a small selection of th thoughts, it's, it's just so restricting. And I, you probably, you know, understand what that's like where everything references back to you and what you need and how you don't measure up and what do people think about me and why am I like this and oh my god so many things to sort out but the, the beauty of this training is you don't need to sort anything out you just need to rest as open intelligence then you'll clearly see that you are already okay you are relaxed that every circumstance is the perfect circumstance and it doesn't mean that you you know all of a sudden become some sort of vegetable oh wow isn't it great I'm in such a wonderful circumstance and just sit there like that with drivel coming out of your mouth. You still, you still like the things you like. In fact, you'll enjoy them a lot more, especially practices that you're involved in. The, the purpose of practicing is the practice itself. You, you might have heard that. But when you, when you rely on open intelligence, this will become your experience. That, you know, everything essentially is, is, is a, re a representation of indivisibil indivisibility of God, of perfection. And what you start to, to reveal in your experience is that what you've been looking for is your life. <laughs> it's like, it's crazy. It's like, I thought that perfection and, and, the, and the recognition of the nature of reality, it can't be in England. You know, it's just full of English people. It's just so miserable and the rains all the time. It needs, it's gonna be in India on a mountainside, you know, it's gonna be beautiful. So I, guess I went to India all my nonsense followed me, all my thoughts, emotions and sensations in a massive rucksack. I couldn't get rid of them. So through this training, you start to see that everything about you provides you with what you're looking for. And, and the instruction of short moments is how you recognise that. So something comes up you don't like, like anger or whatever, you know, like I'm... I'm a bit older, you know, I'm mature, I, should, I shouldn't be thinking like this. Any thought, any, any experience now becomes your empowerment. You don't have to indulge it, you don't have to avoid it, you don't have to replace it, you can just leave it alone and just sit back and relax, acknowledge open intelligence just for a brief moment. So, so simple. So that's a freebie, you can take that with you now. If you never come back, you've always got that in your back pocket. Um, but we, we also have other supports, um, trainings, 
teachers and the community. And if you visit the Balance View website, there's so much free videos, free books, free talks. And if you listen to these, it elicits the, the direct experience of open intelligence. And again, just to emphasize, this, this training is about your experience. What happens in your experience if you do listen to a few talks every day? And I, I think you'll be really, really amazed at how much more relaxed and open and powerful you start to feel without anything changing. So, you know, really, from the heart, I would really, really encourage you to just test it. Just give it a go. Listen to some talks. After the open meeting, we can um, put talks for free on your device. Um, and that's all I did. I didn't believe a single word when I came to this training. It all sounded exactly the same as before, you know, oh God, you're perfect, blah, 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 blah. But to be given practical tools to test, in my experience, and then given the heartfelt invitation to do that and see what happens, come back and ask questions about that. My life has changed a billion percent. You know, it's, it's just beautiful now. Nothing's changed. And I, I just wanted to say um, about uh, the school systems and education um, we do actually have uh, many participants who are conventionally qualified as teachers and we have schools, home schools, um, popping up where the fundamental basis of educating these young people is the adults are relying on open intelligence. And just that alone is very, very powerful for the children. Now, of course, the education systems in, in most countries, you need to meet certain requirements. You can't just... You know, we don't just sit there and say, oh, you're like the colour blue in the sky, it's inseparable. You know, it's, it's exactly the same. They have fun. And, but the, one of the things about the training, and this, this relates to sharing the trainings too, is if I meet somebody new, I don't talk about the training. Just, it's, you know, my job is to be an example of the training. And like I said, with the example of my family, just being helpful, nice, available to support and serve people without needing them to look a certain way. It's very compelling. And to meet people who actually listen. Oh, I never used to listen to people. I just wanted to put my, my opinion across as soon as possible, wait for a break in the, the conversation and let people know how, how much conventional knowledge I have. And now I, and now I listen. So that's something you could test as well, actually listening to people. I'm not saying that you all don't listen to people, but I never did. And that was one of the one of the best things in my life from this training was to actually the first time my father called me um, after I'd been in this training for about three months, I was convinced that there was an imposter on the phone. He was so nice. He was so like reasonable and nice. And why am I not so annoyed? And and then I realised it's me that's changed. It's not my father. And for what, the first time in my life, I was actually listening to what he was saying and not listening to, oh my God, it's him again, he doesn't understand me, he wants me to work in a bank, he's never liked me, you know, all of that. And all I can see now is just unconditional love, it's so, so, so perfect.